You know, it's always good to have an eye for detail, but my mom always said you need to make sure you can also see the forest for the trees. Welcome back to Let's Play Pikmin. I'm Maestro. I'm Nebels. I'm Ben. Today we are going to take on the Forest of Hope, the first area in which we will be collecting um, a good amount of ship parts. So the beginning of every day is the same. We land and Olimar starts yammering. <laughs> he does not no. shut up. No, this is uh, this is the only time the beginning of the day he's going to start talking. Uh, but while he's doing that, he's just telling us, you know, stand under the onion, pull out Pikmin, get started. And as you can see, there is a new feature at the top of our HUD. That is our, our clock. time our time counter yeah um as it goes from left to right that's going to mark how long we have until sunset sunset being the end of the day which come hell or high water olimar's getting on that ship and he's taking off yep whether you're ready or not um Ooh, is that palette posy a different color i see yes that one is yellow we're gonna meet more friends No? Yes? We, listen, we agreed last episode that Pikmin are friends. So we're setting that uh, one Pikmin to pick some grass there. That's going to become important here in, eh, a little later on. Oh, he's doing such a good job! Look at him go! Give him a dollar. And here's our first enemy, the Dwarf Red Bulbor. Um, he's one of uh, three or four of the more common enemies you'll encounter in the game. Pretty basic, uh, as you can see, uh, along with every other creature we will encounter. It also have a helpful guide uh, for how to kill it. Basically throw Pikmin at it till it dies. <laughs> His body is a face. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. So right now all we're doing is propagating more Pikmin. Um, this first day is going to have absolutely no editing for as far as like time lapses are concerned. And the reason for that is because I, I do want to show off exactly how long a day actually is when you're trying to get things done. And believe me, there is a lot to get done in this game. Yeah, no, Pikmin requires, like, so much thinking and planning out. Yeah, it, but it is a a very friendly game for speedrunners. Um, oh, and if you ever if you ever have time, I do suggest looking up a couple speedruns, some six-day runs, um, just because they are incredible to watch. Just, just for the micromanagement that's involved in it alone, um... But being an RTS, that is kind of part of the package. Right. You have to make sure you're using your time and your resources efficiently. Um, and I would say that Pikmin is probably one of the best uh, starter RTSs you can try out, if only because... And here we have our first ship part that we'll be collecting. And it requires 40 Pikmin. Uh, we do not have that. Uh, I'm sorry, we do. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I was remembering an alternate take in which uh, my routing was a little bit different. Um, uh. Oh, and, and, and there's a blue one. Yeah. How about that? I don't know why, but there is. 
I feel like it's nice, it's good to know that uh, Pigment's OST is very lovely. Cars of Hope is such a tranquil song. Oh yeah, uh, the, the, the entire soundtrack for this game is fantastic. Um, I do want to go ahead and mention at this point, um, that you will be spending a good amount of time just kind of waiting for things to get done, which is why you really want to micromanage your Pikmin usage well. Because while a, one group of Pikmin take care of something, like carrying parts back to the ship, you can use other ones to take out enemy creatures, deal with certain obstacles, Build things. or even use them to collect other ship parts, because there are multiple ship parts in this area. And as a six-day challenge implies, um, you would be able to get a lot done in a single day. <laughs> So what we're doing right here is the Pikmin uh, that was plucking that grass uncovered some nectar. And what the nectar does is it instantly uh, matures your Pikmin into flowers. Yeah, they just, they just turbo puberty. <laughs> yeah, anytime you, can, you come across nectar and you have some leaf Pikmin with you, you want to make sure you take the chance to flower them up. Because flower Pikmin mm -hmm. are infinitely more useful than unflowered Pikmin. And yes, your flower, your Pikmin can be deflowered. So here is our second most common enemy in the game, the Red Bulb Orb. Uh, despite their common appearance with the Dwarf Red Bulb Orb, they are actually not of the same species. The Dwarf Red Bulb Orb being a mimic uh, species, uh, a subgroup of bread bugs, but like anything else, Throw Pikmin at it. As long as you have a large group of Pikmin, these guys are pretty easy to take down. Yeah, just rush uh, them from behind and they're dead. Yeah. Uh, alternatively, if you do not have a large group of Pikmin with you, um, just simply throw them on its back. Uh, it will wake up, shake them off. Uh, just simply recall your Pikmin before they do that and rinse and repeat. I, I forget. It, all, uh, all of our dolls have punched him to death, right? Or is that only in Pikmin 2? Yes. Uh, if, 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 if you find yourself uh, without any Pikmin or whatever, you can use Olimar to take out certain creatures. Um, but it is very time consuming. Yeah, I don't recommend it. The hit detection is not very good. Uh, so it is not recommended unless you're taking out very, very small creatures. Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny, but I would do it. That is a big can of beans. <laughs> well, everything is big like, big to Olimar, considering he's supposed, he's supposed to be like the size of a quarter. So we're just going to return some Pikmin right now. You have so many friends. So... Corpse of bug equals more friends. Yes. Yes. That's and, how Pikmin uh, logic works. <laughs> about just about anything will equal more friends. Pretty much. Uh, and as with all the information you'll be seeing as it comes along on the screen, it will tell you uh, exactly how many Pikmin you will get for every dead carcass you bring to an onion. And here, Olimar's chiming in, letting you know it's noontime, and this is when he tells you about your clock. Um. It's honestly, it's pretty straightforward. But as you can see, like, we're what? Nine, ten minutes into the day, and it's already half over? Yeah. So, this, like I said, this is a very friend, speed running friendly game. Uh, I think the current record, world record for uh, the most optimized speed run, is like. 50 minutes or something like that. It is short. Ooh. Yeah. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to go and watch one. Cause like surprisingly with all the speed runs I go and actively watch, I have not seen a Pikmin one yet. Okay. Oh, you so... gave him no time. <laughs> you were just like, tabs up pal, you're gone. Yeah, I do want to go and let you know that the later in the day, as most of the large creatures you encounter will be sleeping cause they are nocturnal. Um, the later in the day it gets, the faster they will wake up. 
So you want to make sure that you either take them out early on the day or take them out quickly. This will become a major factor in later in the game. And here we are encountering uh, uh, another onion here. Uh, uh, this one is yellow. Might be important, might not. We'll see, because Olimar is going to tell us. Look at them, they're so cute. Hi, friend. One of us. <laughs> So yeah, um, I don't think it's any big secret uh, at this point, considering this game's been out for over, for almost 20 years now. Watch how you, watch um, how you might, you might spoil Pikmin. <laughs> yeah, so there are multiple types of Pikmin you will be using in this game, and in the first Pikmin game, there are three different types, red, blue, and yellow, and they all have distinct benefits and disadvantages, which I will touch on as we come to them. But immediately looking at uh, this, these guys, they have a very um, high arch when you throw them. Um, yeah, they, they can go places. Either that or Olimar is very good at basketball. <laughs> Does that look so cool? Yeah. Oh, I love to pick my R6, R6 stand there chilling. Like, do we get to play? So, just, just throw in some more Pikmin. Yep. More friends of all colors. They're so cute. Alright, so what Olimar just said there was pretty straightforward. You can't have more than 100 Pikmin of any type out at once. Um, so that's just another factor of making sure you're managing your Pikmin properly because you only have so many you can use at once. And, yeah, and, you, and eventually you're going to want to balance what, what colors of Pikmin you have eventually. So you can't but, have like all reds and like, yeah. you get like a single yellow and a single blue. Cool. Yeah. But as you're seeing, um, as you continue to grow Pikmin, they'll just get stored inside the onion. And so it is kind of useful to max out the Pikmin on the field if you're trying to grow more, because it is faster to do that and then pull them out later rather than to wait for them to pop out and pluck them, because that does take uh, about 10 to 15 seconds for each Pikmin. And here we have uh, look, the yellow Pikmin secondary attribute. Uh, th they can handle explosives. Wow! Explosives. Yeah. So these bomb rocks are the only way you can remove these stone walls that are blocking your way, and there are a lot of them. Yes, there are. But and you can also blow up enemies if you really just want to hate them. Yes, uh, it is useful, but not recommended in most cases. If only because the uh, AI for Pikmin dealing with bomb rocks is a little finicky. But here we have yeah. the technical information of the yellows. Um, whenever you're managing your yellow Pikmin, especially when you're trying to do bomb rocks with them, there are a couple things you need to keep in mind. Um, primarily, um, if you are trying to use them to take out obstacles, whenever you throw a Pikmin, one of two things will happen. It will either trigger its, uh, 
it's instruction to drop its explosive rock and let and have it blow up or it will just stand there waiting uh, this has to do with hit detection how close it gets to actual obstacles and all that uh, but if it just stands there waiting if you recall the Pikmin back to you it will drop its bomb where it stands and come back to you and you need to be very careful when doing that because if any Pikmin are too close they will all die yeah it's it's you don't want that to happen and here we have some of the more uh, common, if not aggravating, uh, creatures in the game, the sheer grubs. Um, the white ones are females and- They are not friends. And the females are harmless. They won't actually do anything. But the purple ones, the male ones, are. And the reason for that is because when they grab onto a Pikmin, there is a glitch that happens um, to where you cannot cancel out of their eating animation like you can with other creatures. Meaning that once they grab a Pikmin, that Pikmin's dead. It's 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 a loss. And if you're going for a no death run, that is a run killer right there. So more often than not, whenever these guys come up, you will be seeing me, uh, Olimar, taking them on solo. Because that is a safer alternative than to throw Pikmin onto him. A whimsical radar. What a name. Incidentally, there is also a, another glitch uh, that can you can encounter in the game. Anytime you're taking down a larger creature, there is a chance that when it falls, it will crush one of your Pikmin, but it will not give you any sort of indication that Pikmin has died, because normally when a Pikmin dies, you'll hear a tiny little scream, you'll see its ghost, and you'll get really, really sad. <laughs> Pretty much. But when this crushing glitch happens, nothing. You don't even you don't even know it happens. There's no scream. There's no ghost. Your your Pikmin counter just decreases without you really noticing. And then you're and, sad. And I can't tell you how many times I've had to restart playthroughs, going for a no death run because of that garbage. Video games. You just gotta get one more kill before the day ends. Yeah, well the reason why I'm doing this is to clear out uh, enemy creatures. Um, anytime you kill yeah. creatures, um, but don't necessarily recover their uh, dead bodies, they will remain dead for as long as you're there for at least a couple of days. Now, the radar Huzzah! that we just collected is probably the most important part we need in the game because, a as the name applies... It'll help us find other parts. You can use it to locate your other parts, yes. And, you know, that's important. It's kind of what the game is about. So, there's a couple of things here. Um, at the end of the day, any Pikmin you have currently in your party will be fine. Any Pikmin that are left in the landing area will also be are fine. fine. Like if if your Pikmin are, are not in any of those two groups, they will die at the yeah, end of the night. If you, leave them in the, if you leave them in the field, like you'll see the um, dolphin and the onion ship go up in the air, and the Pikmin will be running towards you. And then they and then they just kind of like stand there on the ground, like looking around as like all the night creatures come and eat them. It's very depressing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's heartbreaking to know you've gone through an entire day only to leave one Pikmin behind. Because as you can see there, they they do not wait. No, they're, they're like they're out for blood. Itty bitty little Pikmin blood. And Olimar is talking about collecting his radar, as though we haven't collected it yet. I don't know, maybe he knows something I don't. You 
made so many friends! Alright, with that complete, that ends day two. When we return, we will be going back to the Forest of Hope to collect some more ship parts. I don't know, maybe something special will happen. We'll see! <laughs> Hopefully we'll, we'll meet even more friends, because that's what this series, series is about, right? No, it's right? about not dying on a foreign planet. <laughs> and making friends. And sacrificing dead carcasses to onion yeah. gods. <laughs> well, yes, that too. <laughs>